Hey, I uh, wanted to take a few minutes and just send uh, a little tutorial. I think this will probably live for a while in our culture. And it, I guess if I wanted to address to whom it's to, uh, two different groups of people. It is to the, the incredible uh, leaders that we already have that are leading city groups and to those that may come, uh, that may be added in. And I trust that as God continues to grow our culture, we're gonna add more leaders to us. And, I wanted to talk a little bit about the format that we've moved into in 2015 and uh, just share a little bit about some stuff that God's been showing me in my heart uh, through conversations with people and just in some, just praying through where we're going as a church. Uh, a lot of you know a guy named Gary Peters that I worked for for years and he pastored me. It was probably one of the bigger uh, influences in my life, my spiritual father, um, for lack of a better term. Gary used to say this phrase all the time, um, that it, it's a, I think it's in Genesis, and it says that he places the lonely in families. He talks about God's passion to see us interconnect into family units and groups. And uh, as vintage has grown, that, that's been a, consider, a, a continued concern for me and a prayer for me. And that I guess I want you guys to understand that from my vantage points, point city groups at vintage are the family units. Uh, that God has blessed us with to really be able to protect people and grow people. It's amazing to have the big macro environment where we come together on Sundays and um, as we've multiplied services, it's become very clear to me that uh, there's some wisdom in the Lord that I didn't, cons I didn't consider. I know that sounds funny, but it never dawned on me that the Lord was gonna call us to grow a church and to grow a movement in Fort Collins and this region, but do it as multiple small churches and literally our gatherings are never going to be more than about 400 at one time because of this facility that we've come into and at first i was frustrated by that because i realized it was going to call us to do multiple gatherings but i realized that there's so much wisdom in that because i think in our culture one of the cries we hear the most from people is that they want intimacy in the church they want the presence of god they want it. and so i want to share with you some things that just to encourage you I know that the work you're doing as city group leaders, the work that some of you are looking at doing as city group leaders, it's a, it's a heavy work at times, it's a rewarding work, no question, but there's an aspect of it that is so difficult because you're constantly in people's lives and I just want to encourage you uh, to, to just pastor well. All of you, in my, from, just understand from my perspective, you're pastoring with us in our culture loving on people, helping form the image of Christ in them, walking alongside of them. One of my biggest growth uh, aspects as a, as a leader was learning that pastoring just means I'm going to do life with people. I'm going to be in it with them. Good, bad, and the ugly. And just be there. Well, the reality is the bigger we grow, Jesus models a 12-person grid that he has 12 people that he chooses to regularly invest in. And so really the city group model was birthed out of that breaking our culture back down into smaller subsets for one purpose. I don't want anybody to come into our culture and be forgotten. I don't want anybody to come into our culture and not be developed forward. So the call of God, the charge in your life is so vital and so important. And I'm so grateful for what you do with this. I want to talk through a little bit of the format and I've been using it. Um, so some of you don't know, I lead a city group as well. Um, and I lead that with our leadership team. And we do that to, uh, on Wednesday nights and during the city group system. And it's a great time, it's a chance for me with uh, my internal team and, and the pastors and everybody just to just to have a spiritual journey together that's not just about the business of church. And so it's, it's so important, we love it. And so we, we utilize the same model and, and what I've discovered about it that I think is really strong, I wanna share with you and some things that I, as we tweak it, just want you to know we're in this with, with you together doing this and so we'll always tweak it. Uh, my goal is that this, these tutorials like this just feel like life. It, uh, this is what I would want to be able to say if we were sitting down having a cup of coffee, which is what I would prefer, but uh, none of us have that amount of time lately. So in a perfect world, I want us to consider walking into our groups on a given night. The way I would do it is I think that we always have some music playing. We always have some atmosphere created uh, we're, so, so we can invite people into a place, into a, something culturally that's different from when they came outside. For me, I always throw worship music on. I, I try to, some of you know this about me and you might be laughing right now that I'm, I'm kind of, I hate dead, dead air and dead space. And here's why. 
uh, when there's a when there's something soft and, and, and gentle and creative in the background, it just invites people to relax. And so I love that in our city groups, and I would love to encourage you to do that. Um, obviously, I'm not going to control that. That's not my heart. But just I think it's part of having a really successful group. When people come in, we come in and we eat, and historically that time can feel conflicted because we're like we got to get to the group, we got to get to the group. I want to encourage you, bless you, release you, implore you is the better word. Let that time just thrive. For me, one of the number one functions in these groups is that we get to know each other and we do life together. And that's the place where the important conversations happen. What most of you don't know is on a Sunday morning, most of the important conversations that happen for me happen pre or post gathering with people, just standing there talking with them over a cup of coffee. It's my favorite part of loving on people is just in that innocuous moment that nobody's really thinking about, they just share where they're at and you get to minister to them. So let that be, let that be whatever it needs to be. Like for our group, a lot of times that's 20, 30 minutes and it's life, we're laughing, we're just loving on each other, we're, we're, we're enjoying each other. Jesus says this, that one of the things that connects to our pre the, the, the release of his presence in our gatherings is the way we love each other. So let's fortify worship by loving on each other really well in our city groups in that way. So for our group, um, and the way I'd love our groups to go is uh, the transition moments, which is really as leaders what we're most responsible for is the transition moments. We come out of that, I usually say, hey, five, five minutes, we're going to head in, we're going to pull in, and we're going to do some worship together. And so everybody knows, nobody pays attention to you instantly, and so we just, I don't care, I laugh. I'll usually pull the music down because it kind of starts to cue everybody something's changing, draw everybody into the wherever we're going to do worship. We pray into worship, and we just worship for a little bit. And for those, of, for those groups that have a live worship leader, bless your worship leaders to to go after. Let them know. Hey, give me two great songs, full songs, and then just chase wherever the Holy Spirit's calling you to go. And, and let them know how to serve you successfully. For those of you that are doing uh, the, the MP3s on video, you already know that time and encourage people. Hey, when you're gonna, we're gonna worship now and here's what this is a time for. It's a time to just pour our hearts out on the Lord, to hear God's voice, be free to walk around. Uh, don't feel like you have to sit in this room. We're going to turn, make sure the volume's at enough of a level that people can get lost in it. Let that time go. Let it flow. And then when we come to the end of that time, the transition happens again where we step up as leaders and we say, hey, we're going we're gonna to pull this together. I'm just going to pray and, and pray it, pray them out of that time. I believe always in transitions, we pray first, talk second. So we pray out of that time and then we talk to them. So the way I would love to see that work is we pray out of that time and say, hey, we're going to move into a time of connecting together. What, what I want is I want groups of two or three max, and we're going to get together, and we're just going to check in and love on each other. And here's the two questions or three questions. The two questions that I care about knowing, how's your time with the Lord, red, yellow, or green? We use that because everybody's used to traffic signals. Red means I haven't been spending time with Jesus. It's bad. Yellow means it's kind of hit or miss. Green, it's doing great. And uh, the next question is really simple. Uh, do you have any needs or anything I can pray with for you? It's my passion to see the body minister to the body. So it's a time for us to facilitate that. And maybe you have an icebreaker question and you, in your group you need something else to get them going. That's awesome. Uh, use that. Please be free to do that. Uh, but those other two questions I think are super vital because I want our people to know and get used to that sense of there's people caring for me spiritually. We've watched that happen in our own leadership team. That's a regular part of our every Tuesday. And uh, when we get together for our leadership gatherings to work on business of the church, we always start it that way. There's just such a sense of comfort knowing I've got a team around me of friends and family that will be there to help talk me through stuff when I need it, pray for me, all of that. So we come to the end of that time, and how do you, as a leader, how do you discern the end of that time? Uh, I just pay attention to what's going on. When, when I see that there's maybe just one group left that's still going, I just say, hey, we're going to pull it back together here. And at that time, if there's something that the Lord put on my heart that maybe I want to share for the day, or there's a prayer point that I feel like came up, or maybe there's a need that I know about that we need to go after together, I'll pull everybody together and we'll go after that thing, whatever it is, or, or I share that, that teaching or that vignette. And in the way we've built these teachings that you've been getting is my, my, in a perfect world, 
at the end of the night. We just say, hey, you know what? What a great night. We're going to close tonight out. We just got a, a, a short teaching uh, from Pastor Greg, and we're going we're gonna to share that teaching, and then I'm going to close this out in prayer, and, and we'll dismiss the night. Ideally, that should be at about the 90-minute cycle. I want to value people's time in our day and age. It's important. Does that mean a group has to stop? No, but I think it's always important when we advertise 90 minutes that we let people, we give people the option at 90 minutes. Say, hey, you know what? We're gonna, maybe it's officially closed. Does that mean it won't hang out for another 30 and laugh and talk or an hour? No, and I love that if it does. It does for our group as well. We always say we're gonna be done at 8.30 and nobody leaves till 10 o'clock. I love that. That's the best problem in the world when we love each other too much to not hang out. However, we never want to put that person in a really awkward spot that wants to go. So that's kind of an overview and a grid for how I want these nights to work and how I want these nights to roll. And as you can see, the leadership index is not super heavy. There's not a lot that we're actually doing as leaders other than just facilitating what Jesus wants to do in these nights and moving people from pocket to pocket. And I love that because it gives us a, a, an easy grid to be successful in. And, uh, if you're like me, um, I enjoy knowing how to be successful uh, easily. I'm not, uh, I'm not a fan of the, the things that I can't control. I'm not a fan of situations that are outside. And I like to know what it looks like to win. And so I want you to know what the win looks like. And I also want you to know how incredibly blessed I am that you do this with us. How incredibly important this is. This is more than just a small group system. I believe the city group model is so vital and so important that it is the thing that will allow us to continue to be healthy. It's the thing I, I sat with some people this week who were uh, who were sharing with me how, how hard it had been for them to, to integrate into the culture of vintage, and it just made me so sad. And in what what saved that situation for them was being able to connect into a city group that really really helped them. And I want to encourage you how important that is. Don't ever let the enemy lie to you that it's not important. It is important. Don't ever be surprised when your home life blows up on the day of City Group. You're doing something that matters so much to the kingdom. You're doing something that is in the trenches, grassroots level, shaping this culture and, and creating the opportunity for the glory of the Lord to invade this region by loving people and teaching. I love you and uh, as always, you can reach out to Pastor Ben or myself for, for advice or coaching. We are with you and for you and we can't wait just to see what the Lord does with Vintage. Be blessed.